Hi there, this is Kid. I've just finished the video on the IB Hickshell Math on the new specimens paper prepared for the 2014 new syllabus. Now is the turn for the SL for the standard level. Okay, this is a specimens paper and this is the new syllabus special edition so I would only choose the question that are on the new syllabus for 2014 uh, to be shown in this video. There are other some interesting questions that maybe you're going to do in the future. Okay? So there are uh, one or two things that are new in the SL syllabus only, and two of them, uh, most importantly, are correlation and different integration by substitution. Okay? They are well covered in the new syllabus, uh, especially for correlation. So I'm going to, uh, in the specimen paper, I mean, so I've chosen them out to be shown on this video to tell you. Uh, what you might be missing. Okay, uh, so this is it. The paper one, okay, in the paper one, in the question two is already a correlation paper. You can see clearly because of this table, of, uh, this graph. Okay, there are nine books on the shelf, each book, blah, 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 whatever. Let R be the correlation coefficient. Okay, the first question <laughs> is really about your concept. Write down a possible minimum and maximum value of R, right? What is the range of the correlation uh, coefficient, right? It would happen to be between negative one and one, okay? One meaning it's a perfect positive correlation, and negative one meaning it's a perfect uh, negative correlation, okay? So this is something you really need to know. For part B, what if R is zero point nine five? Which of the following diagram would best represent the data? For zero point nine five, it's not exactly one. So it wouldn't be perfect, it wouldn't be a straight line, okay? But it's pretty strong, it's really strong positive correlation. Uh, positive means trending up, and negative means going down, like this. Okay, therefore the answer is C. Okay, so C. Okay, for part C, for the data in D, okay, which of the two expressions would describe the correlation of them? Okay, this kind of correlation is, this kind of correlation is negative, and also it look quite fit a straight line well. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's quite strong. Okay, so it's strong negative okay correlation. So let's see which of the turning two would represent it. Oh okay first strong and negative. Second it's probably linear. Okay. So we will use this to linear and strong negative. So that's it. It's really just about your concept and nothing else for this question. Next is still in paper one, still in paper one is the fifth question on integration. Okay, both of the, both of these could be solved in other ways, but the most easiest way is probably integration by substitution. So it's a new thing in the syllabus. Okay, so we're going to check this out. Okay, how do you do integration by substitution, right? If you don't know this, probably your teacher just needs telling you this. Okay, so there is a standard procedure. We're gonna let you be something. Okay, the hint is is usually the denominator. Usually, okay. But the key is when you do substitution, there are usually two parts. Okay, sometimes a fraction, sometimes multiplied together. The key is when you differentiate one of the parts, you will get the other part. Okay, when you differentiate one part, you get the other part. You probably choose that as your u. Okay, so this is what we do. We choose u to be this, so 1 plus e to the power of x. What we need to do is we differentiate both sides with respect to x. Differentiate 1 is 0. Differentiate ex give you ex. So this is what I mean. I differentiate this, I get the other part. So that's why we choose this as my u. What we need to do next is we make dx the subject. So uh, it's amazing. What we can do is we multiply, we can multiply dx to the other side. Okay. Then we make the x the subject, right? So we need to divide e to the power of x. So e over e to the power of x equals dx. Okay. Then we can proceed to the substituting part. This is why it's called method of substitution. We plug the things in. So 1 plus ex is here. This is u. So it's ex over u. While this is dx, dx is this plane. So we multiply du over ex. 
The magic is they will be cancelled out to integrate one of a new du. This should be something that you can integrate. What is the answer? Well, the answer is log ln. Okay, one over u, right? Do not do like oh, this is u to the power of negative one, so is integrate is negative one plus one is zero over zero. This is no good because we cannot divide by zero. So integrate u plus c for integration. Don't miss the plus c, right? And lastly, we need to write u back into what you let. One plus e to the power of x plus c. This is part A. Okay. Part B. Part B can also be done by doing substitution. Okay. One of the substitutes could be the whole side three x. Ah, uh, yeah. The question is side three x or side three x. Okay. One of the substitution could be the whole side three x, because if you differentiate side three x, there would be some cosine three x coming out. Okay, so what I mean is, we just let u, we just let u be side three x, right? And then we differentiate this. Okay, it's du dx. Differentiate side is cosine three x, and then by chain rule, we need to differentiate the inside three times x. Differentiate three x is three, so we multiply by three, right? 3 cosine 3x. So we multiply the x to the other side, right? And then we divide. Okay, so you see this is pretty standard. And then we do the substituting part. So side 3x is u. dx is this big thing. Again, side 3x. A cosine three x and cosine three cancel out. This is one over three, one over three. So we put it out. U du integrate u du is u squared over two plus c. So one over six. Well, u squared, right? So side squared three x plus c. Also done just by putting it in. So this is really standard. Method of sub substitution for integration. If you totally have no idea what this is, you better learn it right now because this is definitely inside the new syllabus. Okay. The last question that seems to be on the new syllabus would be on the paper two. Okay, it's the first section B question. It's again on correlation. Okay, but this time it's on regression line. Okay, that one is just on the uh, simple correlation. No line of best fit yet, and this is it. The regression line. Okay, the regression line is of course found by using the calculator. I hope you can see my calculator. Okay, so what we do is um, let me show you once how do we found the regression line. Okay, we just input all the values into the calculator into the list. Uh, sorry, we go to stat. Okay, edit. Then we put it in. Uh oh, did someone? Yeah, someone touched my. Okay, we go to list one. Okay, let's clear it. Clear the list one. Then pluck the x in. So 26, okay, 44, 65, 23, 50, 31, 68, 26, 57. And we put all the y into list two. Okay, after that, we go back to stat, we use calculate, okay, sec, uh, and then linear regression, ax plus b. Make sure your x list is this one, y list is this two, and there's no frequency list. Calculate, bam. So it, ax plus b, so your a is the slope, or the gradient, if you use this form mx plus c, this is m, and the b is the c, okay? But anyway, that's the regression line. So we're going to copy this down. Is uh, y equal to a is 10.6, 10.7, excuse me, x plus b, b is 121 for three significant figures. Okay. 
usual linear line as a model answer the following question. Interpret the meaning of the gradient. Oh, they asked for the meaning. Oops, sorry, some technical problem. I stumbled my, my camera. Right. To interpret the meaning, we need to know what's going on. Okay, each day factory record the number of box it produced to the total cost. Okay, so what the gradient usually means, right? Gradient usually means rise over run. What is rise and run? Right? Rise basically change in y over change in x. Okay, and what's y? Y is the production cost. Okay, the total production cost. Okay, and x is the number of box it produce. Okay, so that is when you change in x, then you produce one more box. Okay, change in x, right? When you produce one more box, how is the total cost going to change? So that's the meaning of the gradient. Okay, the change, the change in total cost per, okay, per number of, per boxes produced, per box produced. That's the meaning. And what is y-intercept, right? How do we usually find y-intercept, all right? We find y-intercept by considering when x equal to zero, right? When x equal to zero, what does that mean? That means you produce zero box, so you do nothing. When you do nothing, there is still some cost. The cost is still 122. So we usually call it the fixed cost. That is, even if you do nothing, you're gonna spend this. So we call this the fixed cost, right? So estimate the cost of producing 60 box. That's pretty easy. We just plug x being 60, okay? So it's 10.7 times 60 plus one to one. Seven, six, three. The factory sells box for 19.99 each. Find the least number of box that the factory should produce a day in order to make profit. Okay, so why is the total cost? Okay, so what is the cost for one box? For one box, okay. For this y, they would make this. They would x. They would make x many boxes. Okay, this is the total cost, and for this cost they would have made x boxes. So that is the cost per box. Okay, let me do it here, let me do it here. Would be the total cost, okay, divided by the number of box produced. This is the cost per box, okay? I need to earn something, right? So I need the cost to be lower than my selling price. So I need this to be lower than 19.99. So I want to solve this. Right. So how do we solve this? We multiply x to the other side. Since the number of box is positive, we don't need to swap this inequality side. Okay, we need to subtract to the other side. So it's 19.99 minus 10.7 is uh, 9.29x. 1 to 1 divided by 9.29 is, okay, x is bigger than 13.02 therefore we need 14 box of the 14 box onwards we would have earned something okay the last part comment on the appropriateness to use your model to estimate the cost for 5000 box all right 5000 okay look at this the range of the boxes that we have here okay, sorry technical problem the number of box we have here is like 26 to, okay, at most 68, okay? 5,000 box is way outside of this range. Therefore, it's no longer appropriate because maybe for the factory after this range, okay, the situation would have changed and the cost would really be different. So whenever the number you want to predict is totally outside your range, we call this extrapolation. And whenever it's extrapolation, we would think is quite inappropriate. Okay, because outside the range, things may change. Estimate the number of box produced when the total cost is 550. Okay, 550. 
Okay, the lowest in this range is 400, highest is 800 something. So it seems that 500 something is inside the range, so we call this interpolation. And we would say, yeah, that would be appropriate. Okay, so all in all, the Excel paper is quite uh, reasonable. It's not too hard, unlike the HL one, because a lot of stuff, as well, one of two stuff seems to be out of the syllabus, and the question itself are also quite hard. So, well, this is it. The SL is not too bad. And uh, yes, we also made a video for the HL on the new syllabus stuff on the HL paper. So if you know any friends that are doing HL, you can recommend my, my video to them. And you can also send me requests on what you want to be done in the future. Okay, there are definitely a lot of plans, but your wants would always be satisfied first. Okay, so that's it.